Stop by and gave us sodas. Out here messing around. I got friends that are LAPD. 
the Martin Luther King uh, Shopping Center. I think it is. There's on top of the roof in case people do drive by shootings on the uh, road out there. We can, if they stop, we can fire back at them. If they are, uh, if they're, if they're just driving by and shoot, we're just going to stop. Use the minimum force. You know, if a guy is coming at you drunk. They said breakfast was coming. They also said the bus was here. They had less than 40 arrests. Which, as I said, they attribute to the fact that they don't know us. They don't know the enemy they're dealing with. So somebody is going to have to test to see how the garden reacts. And they know that's going to happen, whether it be today, tonight, or tomorrow. Somebody wants, they're going to have to test us out to see. And that's why I'm telling you, just because nothing happened does not mean nothing is going to happen. Some group or some punk is going to test out a garden to see how they react to it. And that's where we have to respond professionally. And, is there any reason why this uh, automobile is coming in the compound cannot be, you know, at least pop the trunk open? I mean, we don't know what these people are coming in. If you feel comfortable in doing that and you're on the gate, do it. I'm Whoa! <laughs> I'm LA City uh, paramedic, EMT. We work right down this block. Uh, in my civilian world, yeah, I work in this area. Yeah. So you're right, and yeah, you're from right around here. Huh? Do you go to this mall much? Come to this mall, yeah. Do a lot of EMS calls during the week. Four rounds into my ambulance. Uh, during the riots, huh? During the riot. That was Wednesday night. In my civilian job. When did you get called up? Uh, I was called Wednesday doing work at about four four o'clock p.m. And uh, I left work, went home, got my BDU, and reported for duty after that. Some soldiers put a uniform on, and then they switch from being a citizen to a soldier. So in a sense, you know that that's our neighborhood that got right now. It's not like we don't have an interest here. We do, because you know we live in those communities. We grew up there. We went to school there, and we and we still attend church there. And, and some of us still live in LA. I live in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on active duty now with the National Guard. Uh, I retired from the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, and and what are you? I retired in uh, uh, 1984. 
What floor were you in the LAPD? Yeah. I was watching you. Which precinct? Uh, General Affairs. And, and, uh, and, and I was on LAPD and in the National Guard in 1965 when a Watts riot occurred. And so I've been through this before and I thought I would never see this again. And I, I was involved in the Watts riot both as a police officer uh, and as a uh, National Guard. Oh, here you go. But then, as now, I felt a sense of loss because. No How many people in the division? 16,000. Mm -hmm. And it's my, it's my duty and responsibility to run the division day to day operations. Food support. Uh, both by the, the government procurement and just by voluntary civilians has been amazing. I walked into the basement of the sheriff's substation and there was a table, it had to be 25 or 30 feet long, and this, it looked like a buffet at uh, a fine dining restaurant. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I think we need to shut this off. I, this I know, it's going to give Army Chow a bad name. I know you're here pretty quick. The vast majority of civilians in the sector are very, very positive. Uh, they, they made mention of, of one guard post uh, that had uh, one team of five guys at it and a civilian brought out five plates just like it came off the supper table with aluminum foil to the guys on, on the guard post, which is pretty amazing. Uh, guard post had a, an incident with the three carloads of uh, gang members driving by real slow.